Mark chapter 2, staying with the Gospel of Mark, concluding Matthew. Mark, we can look at some things of the church. Mark is looking at the servant of Jesus Christ. We're to be servants of God. Again, he entered to Capernaum after some days. And it was noticed, excuse me, it was noise that he was in the house. Noise means everybody's talking about it. Hey, you know where Jesus is? Do you hear where Jesus is? Hey, I heard Jesus is over here. So people are talking. Things haven't changed. Straightway, many were gathered together. Insomuch that there was no room to receive them. This is in the house. It's wall to wall and packed up. No, not so much as about the door. So no one could get in. No one can enter. And he preached the word unto him. He preached the word. Preached the word. He didn't have a fellowship meal. He didn't have a movie. He didn't, who, who could bring to most people? <laughs> he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, very painful, I've been told, which was born of four. So one guy is sick, and there's four of his friends that bring him to Jesus. Okay? This is not church. Jesus is in a house. He's preaching. That's the early book of Acts. They are bringing him not for church. They are bringing him to Jesus for healing. There are some people that will bring people to church because their pastor wants them to do it. There are people that bring them to church because, you know, if I get the most people, I can get the prize at the door. If you bring the most people to church, you get a Tootsie Roll. If you bring the most people to church, you get recognized from the pulpit. Well, you ain't going to get no credit for that. So Jesus is in the house preaching. He's not in a church building. And every preacher would love to have a house filled wall to wall and upside down with people. Today they call that the mega church. But this is nothing like the mega church because there's preaching the word. And they come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him, Jesus, for the press, <laughs> can I take it out, out of context for a minute? The press is not going to bring you to Jesus. They're going to stand in the way of getting to Jesus. Get back to context. They uncovered the roof where he was. <laughs> what a commotion. The only thing they can do to get to Jesus, they got to crawl up on the roof and start tearing the roof apart. And when they had broken it up, so when they uncovered it, you think, oh, they're doing it nice and gently, a little piece there, a little that. Nice. Don't interrupt Jesus. Don't make a commotion. And the next part of the of the verse says they broke it up. Jesus is preaching, back, 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 crunch, sawdust. <laughs> They let down the bed where the sick of the palsy lay. So they get up on the roof. They break open the, the, the roof. Sunlight comes peering in. And then here comes a bed in a room filled of people while Jesus is preaching. Now, I get many aspects when I read the Bible. And my question would be, being in many churches under many pastors and and evangelists and all that. And well, my question is, what would the pastor do if that happened there? You interrupted my message. I was in one church. It was the last time I was there. I got up to go use the men, the men's room. I had to go potty. I walk out. I go out in the I go out in the men's room, and I come back to go in, and the ushers are at the door saying, "You can't." I said, "What?" Pastors don't like it for people to walk out of the whatever he called it and to come back in. 
I had to sit out in the hallway because nature called and I could not, because I would interrupt the pastor's message. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Well, you know, we, we want to have the children go off to another session like that because we don't want to interrupt the message. Shouldn't they want to be here the message? Shouldn't you want them to be there in the message? Shouldn't you tell the parents you got to raise those children right where they would obey and, and act and behave in church? I'll tell you, if mom, if I misbehaved in the public somewhere, unlike down here in Florida, I'll tell you, I would have been taken out of the out of the store, into the car. I would have been taken home. My behind would be red. We'd get back in the car, go back into the store. My mom said, yeah, that's, that's our carriage here. Don't mind my son. Telling you people down south here in Florida, that's personal. That's two cents. With inflation, it's probably about 10 cents now. They let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. So there's a commotion for this one man in the bed who can't do nothing. When Jesus saw their faith, the four that brought the sick one. They had such a faith that Jesus can do what they believe Jesus can do. They're going to get that man anyway, anyhow. He said unto the sick of the palsy, son, meaning that that guy that's sick is Jewish. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Oh, he came for a healing. Sickness, as the main result of all sickness, is because of sins. Now, listen to me. All the commotions, all the trials, all the tribulations, all the pain, all the arrests, all the police, all the ambulances, is the result of sin. When Adam disobeyed what God said, that's all sin. Then came sorrow, suffering, sweat, everything. The main foundation of suffering is sin. Now, whether God done it, whether Satan done it, or whether you done it, or someone else has done it, the foundation is sin. And Jesus says, I sins. They're forgiven. He didn't confess nothing. Isn't that interesting? But there were certain scribes, those are the handlers of the word of God, sitting there and reason in their hearts. In other words, they don't say it out loud. They are thinking inside of their heart. They're talking to themselves. No one can hear it. They're angry in their hearts. And this is what they say in their hearts. Why does this man, Jesus, thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? Okay, there you go. You answer your own question. There he is, God. Now this brings... Early, we're in the second chapter of Mark. And already we're going to look at this is the this is the 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 plea, the sentence of the kangaroo court that arrests Jesus of the chief priest. He speaks his blasphemies. He proclaims to be God. Now that's not what they tell Pilate. Man, they tell Pilate so many different kinds of things. They're about him. And Pilate's, <laughs> I can't find nothing wrong with him. You know why you couldn't find anything wrong with him? Because the chief priest did not bring the charge to Pilate that he is God. And if, he, if, if the charge of God would have been standing, Pilate would say, hey, you're guilty. Are you God? Yes. Then he would have been guilty. So already, Mark chapter 2, this guy is speaking blasphemy. 
He can't for, forgive sin. Only God can do it. Well, Jesus is God. Immediately, I love the word immediately, when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they reason with himself. Okay, so Jesus is there. He's been preaching. He's been interrupted by preaching. You know, a lot of times Jesus gets interrupted when he's preaching. How would your preacher take that? How would your pastor take that if he gets interrupted? So the aspect of God is in the spirit of Jesus. He knows what they're thinking. He knows what they're saying, and they're not saying anything vocal or oral. That they reason with him. So he said unto him, Why reason ye these things in our hearts? Now, can you imagine how they're sitting there, stupid, like a, like a bunch of owls sitting on the tree. Who, 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 who? Well, you didn't say nothing. No, you didn't. But Jesus knows your thoughts. Whether. Be easy to say to the sick of palsy, there's the guy, thy sins be forgiven thee. That's what Jesus said. That's what got him all upset. Or to say, rise and take up thy bed and walk. What do you want me to say? You want me to say what I said, thy sins be forgiven thee? Or you just want me to say, get up and go home? He could have said either or. But, okay, here's the reasoning. That you may know that the Son of Man, Son of Man, that's Jesus. That's the title of the humanity of God in Jesus Christ, the Son of Man. Has power on earth, earth. In his earthly ministry, he has the power to forgive sins. Well, that's going to throw them all into a ruckus. Because the Son of Man was a term used in Ezekiel. Now, and listen, while I'm on this earth, I can forgive sin. They already said there's only one that can forgive sins. That is God. Jesus just told them he's God. Mr. Jehovah Witness. Jesus never said he was God. Well, let's look at this. Verse 7, they're thinking, who can forgive sins but God only? He says, verse 10, the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sin. Me, God. Now, when Jesus gets to sit at the right hand of the Father, he has that all over, universal, with God to forgive sins if we confess our sins. So yes, Jesus said he was God. He, by the way, this describes what we just read is the first time they get upset at Jesus. And it's remarkable that one of the most main cases they get upset at Jesus is when somebody has been healed. Instead of glorifying, instead of rejoicing, hallelujah, he's been healed. <laughs> Who do they think he is? And that's how it goes. He says unto sick of palsy, I say unto thee, arise, get up, take up thy bed, go thy way unto thy house. Immediately he arose, took up the bed, went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed and glorified God. <laughs> well, <laughs> Okay, so who can forgive sin? God. He says, I have the power as a son of man to forgive sins on earth. The guy gets up by Jesus and goes home and they glorify God. There he is. There's God in the manifest in the flesh. Problem is, they're not worshiping Jesus as the Messiah of God. They're worshiping God, Jehovah. And they're thinking Jesus is a good teacher, good prophet, and all that. 
we never saw it on this fashion. We just read about a leper's man. We just read about devils being cast out of men in the, outside the synagogue. We just read about people came to the house with all kinds of infirmities. And I guarantee some of those people that came to the doors and the multitudes that came to him, I guarantee some of them were on beds. Israel, Judah, and the apostles or disciples at this point don't get it. Because we're going to read and pay attention through Mark. Uh, you know, I'm going to be turning over to priests. They're going to... Uh, they're going to scorn me. They're, they're going to ridicule me. They're going to pull my beard. They're going to uh, whip me. And I'm going to be turned over. By, and I'm going to be crucified in three days and three nights. I'm going to resurrect. And as we're already seeing in Matthew, as we go into the second gospel, pay attention who's there at the third day of, of the resurrection of Jesus. No one. They don't get it. And they got the absolute best glorified God as a preacher. Teaching and preaching, and they don't get it. And you think your preacher, you think your pastor is going to get the masses. Really? You think your church is going to dominate a better than what Jesus did? I mean... Let me use the term loosely. You want to talk about a mega church? Jesus had one entire nation as a congregation. And in the end of his ministry, he had a little over 12. One was at the cross. At the resurrection, he's seen above, I believe, 400 or 450. Out of an entire nation of people, 400 people? Marvel not, my, my brother, the world hates you. And he went forth again by the seaside. And all the multitude resorted unto him. Now you see the seaside? You see the resort? So if you want to go on a vacation along a river, along a sea, the ocean, that paradise you're going to would be called a resort. That comes out of the King James Bible. And I bet you don't even know that. We're staying at the resort. We got rooms at the resort. That comes out of the Bible. It comes out of King James. And he taught them. He's preaching and he's teaching. He's serving the people, the creation of God. And as he passed by, looks like he's, he's walking and talking. He saw Levi, this would be Matthew, but Levi here, the son of Appius, Sitting at the receipt of custom. He's a tax collector. Oh, you Americans would get all upset with that. You know, we had the Tea Party. We had the Tea Party movement. And we fight taxes. And the fifth disciple that Jesus called is a tax collector. John says, many of the things have not been recorded. If it could be recorded, it'd be just volumes and volumes. I guarantee there has been a lot of fights with the disciples and Levi or Matthew, which you want to call them. I don't think we should pay taxes. So oh, I bet that started it. So what do you think Jesus thinks of, of taxation? 
when the fifth disciple he calls is a tax representative. What do you think Jesus thinks of your treasurer when his treasurer was a man that the devil came in? If there's two off, three offices is going to attack the church of Satan, would be the pastorate, the music, and the finance. He said unto me, follow me. And he arose and followed him. So Jesus comes up to Levi, Matthew, and says, okay, follow me. Does not say become fishers of men. Did you see that? There's only two men Jesus said be followers of be fishers of men. That was two fishermen. That was Peter and Andrew, his brother. He didn't even say it to James and John, the other fishermen. And Levi, Matthew, arose and began to follow him. He left his desk, whatever table, whatever he was sitting at. A man that's hated by the people. Jesus says, come follow me. And it came to pass that as Jesus sat at meat in his house, Matthew's house, Levi's house. Matthew or Levi, Levi or Matthew, goes to such a following point of, of following Jesus. He says, Jesus, come to my house, we'll have a meal. Many publicans, and that would be your low lights, and sinners. See, publicans and sinners. That's always going to be now, uh, you know, them people. Sat also together with Jesus and his disciples. Now, when Jesus sat with the publicans and sinners, he didn't become a publican or a sinner. He didn't act like the publicans and sinners. He didn't, he didn't smoke dope with the people that smoke dope. And he didn't arouse and caress himself and others. Who, he sat with the publican and sinners in respect and honor, but wholly dedicated to the word that I'm going to preach and teach the word. And if you don't like it, it's tough. I'm going to preach in season, out of season. I'm going to preach the truth. And, and Paul will say, if I become your enemy, speaking to Christians, because I speak the truth. At any point, anybody could have got up, including Jesus, could have got up from this meal and said, okay, I, we're done. And I've done that with people. And I've had people do that with me. I have sat with people involved with drugs, and I didn't do drugs with them. I have sat with with alcoholics, and I didn't become I didn't become a, a drunkard to speak to them. And the world wants that drunken Jesus, the glut in Jesus, smoking dope Jesus. And you're not going to get that, Jesus. You're going to get Lucifer, Satan, that's going to do that. And if you've got a Christian that will involve in their sins in the name of Jesus, he's totally wrong. And these churches, you know, you know, the Easter and Christmas, oh boy, there he goes. We're going to get involved in, 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 in the, the pagan holiday because, you know, this is the two times a year that people come to church and, you know, the people like it. We're going to do it. Oh, that's the drug smoking, pot sniffing, tobacco chewing Jesus that the world wants that you're doing. And don't say, you know, there's, there's people out there who will lay more things. You know, the, the Pharisees had 368 laws. and You know, don't go into that because the Bible says thou shalt not have any idols. Thou shalt not worship any idols. God's a jealous God. And when it comes to Esther and her rabbits and bunnies and, and Christmas and the Santa Claus and the gifts, that is a violation of Ten Commandments. We're not adding nothing new. You want to change the Bible. 
how on earth do you get an Easter bunny with eggs? Bunnies don't lay eggs. And if you think they do, you have been changing history and biology long before America has been changing history and biology. You're all upset because they don't know males from females and females from males. You, why aren't you getting upset? You don't know rabbits lay, rabbits don't lay eggs. They make jelly beans, black ones. I know. I had a rabbit. I had a rabbit for two or three years. You just want to be like the world. You want the world to enjoy. And hey, you don't like what I say? That's perfectly tough. I don't care. God likes what I say. You'll be wrong. You'll be the one with the wood, hay, and stubble. Listen, I sat with the public and the sinners. I bet you some of these church officials haven't. I've sat with the homeless people. I've listened to the homeless people. I've talked to people, like I said, who were, who were drunk. I've talked to people who were stoned. I've talked to people who are complete atheists. I've talked to people that are agnostic. I've talked to people that are homeless. I've talked to the rich. I've been harassed by Christians. I've dealt with the Catholics. I can I can show you a church right now that has nothing to know anything about religion out there. You think that you ought to pray for every church. You're, you're, you're full of it. You don't know church history. You don't join them. The Bible says a Christian is not to join fellowship with an unbeliever. But you're to go in the world and preach the gospel. After the second or third uh, uh, heretic, you abolish Paul and says, okay, that's it. We're done with conversation. We're done. And you go find somebody else. With his disciples, for there were many. And they followed him. And when the scribes and Pharisees, okay, we had the scribes before, now let's add the Pharisees. They're the uppity buff, they're the religious uppity buffs. There's anybody cleaner than clean, it's the Pharisees. Saw him eat with publicans and sinners. They said unto his disciples, not to him. How is it that he eateth and drinketh publicans and sinners? All right. Conflict number two, complaint number two, here it is. Same chapter. How dare you say you can forgive sins? Only God can forgive sin. How dare you hang out with those people? We're not even two chapters in Mark. And then another problem is, He's hanging out with a tax collector now. When Jesus heard it, he says unto them, they that are whole have no need of a physician, a doctor. That's exactly what it means, a doctor. I don't care about the Greek, I don't care about the Hebrew, a physician. But they that are sick, see what I mean? If you're sick, you don't go to a PhD of, of, of theology. He ain't going to help you. If you're sick, you've got some kind of ailment in your body, you go to a doctor, a PhD of the medical of the human body. I came not to call the righteous Pharisees. I didn't come here for you guys but sinners to repent it. Why am I hanging out with them? Because I'm hanging out with the, with the sinners because the sinners will profess and proclaim who they are. You guys are righteous. You ain't going to you ain't going to profess nothing. You ain't going to confess nothing. Now look what Jesus said. 
There are religions out there. Oh, you're not supposed to see a doctor. You're supposed to let the medical healing of, of the herbs and teas and the, the fruits of the ground. And, and, you know, that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, if you are sick, go to a doctor. Rule number one is, all right, you come down with something is pray about it. Number two, not too much. I, I, is a, li a little time. Maybe it'll go away. I don't know how much time. Depends what you got. I mean, if your arm has been cut off and you are bleeding to an artery, you don't wait. You get to the emergency room. You don't run off and get tea leaves of a bark mental tree. No, you get yourself to the to the hospital. You take your arm and you, you put it on ice and you clean it. Jesus, who is God, says if you are sick, you go to a doctor. Now, here's the thing. He says if you are whole, you've got no sickness. You don't need to go to a doctor. So what do you do if somebody's got high blood pressure? You need to go to a doctor. What if you got, somebody's got diabetes? You need to go to a doctor. What do you got? Somebody's got no ailments. Please tell me somebody who has no ailments at all. You ought to at least get a yearly checkup somehow, some way. You ought to get at least two blood workups a year. Because there may be something wrong with you that you don't know what's wrong with you unless you have a blood workup. I sat one time, one of my one of my infections in my feet. You know, I'm laying in bed. I've got every single blanket in the world on me. I've got three electric blankets on me. They're all hot, hot. I am not hungry. I am not drinking anything. I'm just laying in bed. My wife had to drag me to the hospital, and they told us a couple more days like that, he had been dead. He dehydrated himself. He's got an infection that's going into the bone. It was getting worse. And me, I just felt tired and cold. Well, it's old age. I wasn't old then. You've got to reach the people with the gospel. You don't reach the people with the world. You don't use the world to reach the world for Jesus. And this is the error of the of the Laodicean church age. You know, every time we come around the lecture time, the church stands up, and, you know, on their little soapbox or, or whoever can. That's not the church. That's not our job. And when we did math, you remember we did math, you know, the Great Commission, going all the world and teach them and baptize them. But we're in Mark now. We're in two, the second chapter of 16. And Jesus not only teaching, he's preaching. Mark will tell you, go in the world and preach the gospel. You go to your typical pastor. You go to your typical preacher, Sunday school teacher. I know. And Christians. You know, we preach on the street. Ew. You turn people away. Well, that's, what, that's what the Bible says. You know, the, the greatest missionary field of the Christians today, of all the missionary fields, is that Christian will not get out of his house, his front door or back door, and go next door. Never mind China. Never mind Japan, Russia, Mexico. How about your neighbors? Do they know about Jesus? You know, you can go with the public and the sinners to your neighbors, and, you know, you could have, you know, you had a big ham dinner and there's a big bone. You could take that bone and go over your neighbor's house. They got a dog. Hey, can, this is from our ham. Can we give the dog a bone? And, you know, you can become friendly and you can open the door to Jesus.
you'd invite them to church. You'll find that anywhere. 